construction of Avila soon began after the community moved to upstate New York in 1947. Having outgrown the Bronx location, an 84-acre estate was purchased, upon which adequate accommodations would be built to provide a novitiate and a mother house. Within 20 years, a chapel, retreat house, and an auditorium were also completed. It was here in these foothills that Mother Angeline's growing community was planted and took root. The beauty of the Hudson Valley in any season is a manifestation of God's artistic talent. This contemplative atmosphere would give each Carmelite an opportunity to build a spiritual foundation and to prepare well for the life of ministry and prayer. The year was 1967. Mother Angeline took her place among the great religious women of her day. The community and membership in Homes for the Elderly had blossomed forth. God was smiling gently upon that young girl he chose from the Scottish Highlands and led upon the path of his design. Many summers of Mother Angeline's years brought her great joy as the aged were cared for by the sisters in home-like facilities. What brought her the greatest joy, however, was the presence of the novices in her midst. She looked upon these souls as special gifts from God, who, as they entered profession, would keep alive the work that had been entrusted to her. She took great joy in their youthfulness and availed herself of every opportunity to mingle with them and surprise them with special treats. She was anxious for their spiritual growth and often shared her reflections with them. The gift of a vocation was to be treasured. She is remembered as saying, Try to render yourselves worthy of this sublime vocation. Love it, uphold it, cause it to be esteemed. Inspire everyone with love for it. Cherish it in adversity as well as in prosperity, and always regard it as the greatest blessing heaven has bestowed on you. Do well what you do, and do not tire in the efforts you make become perfect in the exercise of the religious life. She loved her novices and postulants and always said she never wanted to live in a house without novices. And the Lord was good to her because until the day she died, we always had novices living in the same house with mother. At times you hear the question asked, what was really the greatest day of your life? What was the happiest day of your life? Well, we all know naturally our first communion day was the happiest. From the first day we were founded, it has been our ideal to make each home a festival of heaven and to keep our elderly people happy and well cared for. There was never room for a sad saint, so the novices contributed their share of fun and frolic to novitiate days. They took their example from one who not only prayed and worked, but who also played, who enjoyed laughter, friendship, and music, with a special emphasis on the music.
Mother would go and she would get fresh vegetables and have three cartons full by the time I had a half a carton full. And also, she loved to bring a treat back to the novices and it was always donuts, fresh donuts, so that they could have donuts and tea. The first time I met Mother Angeline Teresa was in May of 1962 when I came here to Avila to preach a retreat. I remembered it very, very well when I returned to St. Gabriel's Monastery in Boston, where I was stationed at that time. I told the fathers concerning Mother Angeline Teresa that for the first time in my life, I had met a person whom I thought would be canonized. The novices were visions of the future and continued existence of a work begun by God. They reflected the beauty of nature and prepared slowly and intensely as the changing seasons for the day when they would be espoused to Christ. God smiled gently again upon Mother Angeline and the work he had begun in her. Her sisters reflected that smile. Mother Angeline was eager that each newly professed sister be well prepared to embrace the special ministry of the community. The challenge of providing high quality care is ours. We are the standard bearers against those who would exploit the infirmity of old age for their own profit. Mother Angeline rejoiced as many novices made profession and accepted the spiritual and apostolic challenge she set forth. She brought a new philosophy into the care of the aged, which makes her a pioneer in this work and an outstanding contribution which she made has changed the way the aged and the infirm are taken care of here in the United States of America. She was a true daughter of the church and identified very strongly with the Holy Fathers of her time, meeting with them on special occasions and receiving their blessing. Throughout the years, Mother Angeline Teresa stood tall among the many church leaders and professional dignitaries of her day. Professional organizations and institutes of higher education recognized her for her leadership and application of modern concepts of care for the aged. She was a woman before her time and a woman of her time. She was a hidden soul of great wisdom and power. Mother saw in each priest Christ himself, and many regarded her as friend and conferee. I returned to Avila many times to preach retreats and my friendship with mother grew and finally I became a confidant of hers. And the closer I came to her and the better I knew her, 
I understood the wonderful gifts that she had in the natural order for leadership. And in the supernatural order, the wonderful gifts that she had of prayer and of grace and of true holiness. summer gradually drifted into the magnificence of autumn and so mother Angeline slowly and silently entered into the autumn of her life her love her mothering qualities seemed to take on new meaning and expression with the burden of responsibility slowly passed on to her successors mother reached out with caring hands to touch and express love and warmth to all who came to see her the clergy of every circumstance saw in her a woman close to Christ and one who would leave an indelible mark upon the church. Her love for the priesthood was ever more strongly manifested as she responded to priests as dear friends and bearers of her Christ.